right, so blocks are gonna be handy today if you have them. And uh, yeah, otherwise let's just take our seats, find your sitting bones. As I th always think it's a nice exercise every once in a while to sit on your sitting bones. I mean, sit on your fingers so that your fingers, especially, I don't know why the middle finger makes sense to me, sits right at the point of the sitting bones. And then as you arrive into your practice, you can close your eyes and then let those sitting bones get heavy into your fingers. So in other words, let the hips go. And this is how we begin to ground and how we begin to feel that the earth beneath us and feeling the earth beneath us and grounding is always a great place to start. And it's also signals to the body that all is well. We don't need to move into fight or flight. That we can be here present in this now moment. And we can start to turn our gaze inwards. And we can start to feel into our own body mind and just acknowledge or notice what you bring to the practice today. And I want you to let your inner mind's eye migrate to the place between the upper shoulder blades. And just notice that for a moment, see if you can tuck in there with your inner vision, your x-ray vision. And I want you to imagine that there could be a movement forward there. And so I'm not asking you to use muscle action to move that forward. I'm inviting you to see if you could feel how that could softly move forward. And it's a little bit different than the lower shoulder blades. So it's kind of at the upper shoulder blades towards C7. So if you just gently start to rock left and right and pull those hands under, out from underneath you, now reach back, place your hands at the top of the neck, and then just stripe your fingers gently down the neck until you feel that biggest bone. So it usually pokes out a little bit, and that's the transition between your cervical spine, the neck spine, and the thoracic spine, the torso spine. And that bone is, and well, let's see, how, how do I say this? The upper shoulder blades to this bone is the area that you want to melt forward. So just see if you can feel what that might feel like. And we want to keep our neck a little bit out of the equation. In other words, I want the chin to slowly drop a little bit. And then once again, you just put your mind's eye there and you see what would it feel like if I could melt that space forward? And then go ahead and release your hands. And what's tricky about melting that space forward is sometimes what accompanies that melting is also the melting or the releasing of your abdominals. So here's the trick or here's the, here's the um, idea is I want you to bring the frontal ribs in and down and I want you to bring the low belly in and up. So you shorten that front body and then see if you can melt that space between upper shoulder blades and C7. And even if you just feel a little softening, a little melting there, that's a great start because we want to place that into our poses. Now bring the hands, the tippy fingers onto the, the, the tips of the shoulders here and just very gently grab them and you're just gonna pull them wide. And you can lift your elbows up here a little bit and just feel how the width of the, that little bone that's at the top of the shoulder there, how that can actually widen out, the collar bones can widen out. And you're just giving a little bit of a encouraging touch here to remember that. And even the upper edge of the shoulder blade and widen out a little bit. So you just take a moment to see what that might feel like. And then keeping the abdominals engaged and keeping that width, you try to soften that place behind the neck. And then take another breath here. 
releasing the weight of the hips into earth again. Now you're gonna take your thumb underneath your jawline and your fingertips at the, at the back of the head at the occiput. And you're just very gently gonna squeeze the, skull, the side of the skull there and lift up. And just find some length there. Just nice to start out with some just gentle imagination work feeling into the body really quietly so we can set up ourselves for a practice that feels therapeutic. One more breath there. And then keep your hands there, but just gently nod or tilt your chin forward like you're gonna say yes. And use those fingers that are on the back of the occiput to gently traction. One more breath there. Beautiful. And then pressing the head back into those fingertips, lengthen the back of the spine up. So um, hopefully you realize the difference between just lifting the head and lengthening. We'll try that one more time. So there's a lift with those fingers and then a nodding the head forward. And you're still doing a little bit of tractioning here. And then when you come up, the action is one of articulating lengthening. So you really work to find just a little bit of space between each neck vertebra and then very gently release your hands and just feel how that feels in the body. We'll inhale and take our arms out to the side and from the shoulders, spin your hands up towards sky, keeping that space in the upper uh, scapula to C7, keep that soft moving forward and begin to sweep your arms up overhead and take your time because you're feeling into new sensations and just see what that might feel like to keep that space soft. So it likes to, for some reason, push back in a lot of us. And when we just melt that space, sometimes it just helps bring a little more clarity and relief of pain into the upper shoulders. Beautiful. From here, lengthen one more breath, inhaling. And then big sweep around behind you with those arms, just opening up through the chest. Bring your hands all the way down to the floor and then bring them up into prayer. And we'll just take a moment here to make an offering for our practice. To bow and make that offering. And then to inhale, come on up and take a breath and we'll seal that with an ohm together. Inhaling. your hands and open your eyes. We're going to move right away into Kapalabhati breath cycle. So uh, once again, the reminder for Kapalabhati is it's a forceful exhale. The inhale is kind of passive. You don't really have to go inhale because the body will naturally do that, but you're, you're emphasizing the exhale, the forceful exhale. We start with an ujjayi, a plain round of breath. We do 20 of those forceful Kapalabhati exhales. At the end, we inhale, hold the breath for 20. We exhale with control, inhale, cycle, exhale, cycle. We go to 30 with a holding of the breath for 30. Then we go to 40 with a holding of the breath for 40. All right, do your best. Join me, eyes at the third eye point. If you need to stop at any point and regroup, that's okay, I'll be guiding you. Big deep breath, inhaling, full exhale. And the inhale signals the beginning, so we'll inhale deeply for 20. Inhale deeply. Hold the breath softly. Now 
exhale with control. Inhale, Ujjayi, round. Inhale deeply. Eyes at the third point. Exhale completely. And we begin for our 30 count, inhaling deeply to begin. Inhale deeply to hold for 30. Exhale with control, a round of ujjayi, release completely and we'll begin our inhale for our 40 count Kapalabhati. Inhale deeply for a 40 count hold. Stay soft. Control, full round of ujjayi, inhaling deeply and exhaling completely. Blink, open your eyes, take your hands and start to squeeze and open them, beginning to warm up the hands and wrists. We'll take them in circles, really getting into the full circumference. And I like to use my fingers here as if I'm swiping out some really good cookie dough or something from the inside of a bowl. Let's go the other way. We'll sweep it around, really get those hands to be, a, or those fingers to be a part of the movement. You'll get that full body feeling. Good, interlace the fingers, press forward, take cat tilt, breathing the low belly in and up as if you're trying to bring pubis and collarbones together, feeling that stretch through the back. Keep it and just sweep over towards the right. So you're keeping that little cat cap tilt shape and then sweeping over to the left. So you get into the backs of the shoulders and then inhale here, sweep the arms up overhead and like a cow tilt, arch the spine and let the hands widely spread back and apart. We bring the hands together into goofy finger interlace. Inhale, exhale, push it away. Take cat tilt, pulling the, the lowest part of the belly up into the body. Inhale, go to the right, stretching through the left shoulder and inhaling the next time to the left, stretching through the right shoulder and release. Out of that, 
Take a cleansing breath, roll the shoulders. Take your hands behind you on the mat so the fingertips are pointed towards your seat. Step onto your feet. As you inhale, lift up your hips. Grab the floor with your fingers like a grapefruit. Exhale, bring the hips down. Inhale, squeeze, grab the floor, lift up. Exhale, bring it down. Two more, inhaling. Really see if you can get that inhale up into the shoulders. Exhale, back. Last one, as you inhale, can you soften that place behind the upper scapula and C7, soften it forward. Exhale, release it down, back onto your block. Take the opposite crossing of your legs that you had before. We'll take our left hand to our right knee, and I'm gonna hold it and just gently bring it up and in. So I'm trying to kind of use my own hand to plug in that thigh bone, and I'm feeling as I gently lift that thigh, just maybe an inch, that there's a little more action around the base of the spine on that side. And then you're just going to gently turn and you can turn your head and imagine you were trying to peek behind you as if maybe you wanted to know what somebody was doing behind you and then find the opposite sitting bone. So that should be your left one and see if you can widen it out on that block. See if you can just take it maybe another centimeter over to the left. That'll stretch your psoas and then bring it back to center and just close your eyes in the middle take a cleansing breath and see if you notice anything differently in that left belly i'm hoping it just feels just a little bit softer and wider and sweeter here we go second side so the right hand reaches across to the left knee and you lift it maybe just one little inch i have my other hand behind me it could also be behind me on a block and as I lift that, that thigh or that knee, I'm also gonna plug the thigh back. So you just really feel it plugging back into the socket. That'll help you with the twist. Go ahead and look over your left shoulder and then see if you can bring your right sitting bone on that block, see if you can widen it one centimeter and then lengthen up, look over that left shoulder and widen that sitting bone. And we'll get a little psoas stretch, super nice. Good, and then release that. Come back to center, just close your eyes and see if you notice that your right belly now feels a little softer, a little wider, a little sweeter. And from here, we're going to come onto our hands and knees and we're going to take our blocks if you have them and place them near the front of the mat so we can use them later and you're going to turn your fingertips uh, backwards so your hand your hands are backwards they're still going to grab that grapefruit like action and from here the left knee is in the very center of the mat the right leg is going to stretch behind us and we're going to push forward slightly and then step that right, those right toes under and a little closer. And then just grab the floor with your fingers and see if you can hug that leg up into its socket. See if you can pull the belly and the ribs up into the body. Just get really strong there. And then release that knee to meet the other one. Toes taste, stay tucked under. Slowly peel back. So you're just getting a full wrist stretch until you feel those fingers come off the floor and you're gonna sit back on those tucked toes and just shake out the wrists a little bit. We've got one more second side. Take a cleansing breath. And here we go. So reverse tabletop with the hands. You still grab that little grapefruit. The right knee swings forward to the front of the mat. Toes are tucked under, the left leg swings back straight behind you. You're gonna push forward maybe one inch of movement and then re-tuck that toe until you feel really strong in that left leg. See if you can pull muscle energy up. See if you can pull low belly to ribs, ribs to low belly. One more breath. And then bring that knee forward to meet the other toes. Stay tucked. A hard sentence toes, toes stay tucked and reach it on back and this time you're just gonna uh, 
sparkle your hands and you're going to sparkle them up all the way up till they're straight overhead stretch them into the sky find side body long and melt that place of the upper shoulder blade neck area beautiful from here you just reach on back to tabletop regular and the left leg comes the left knee comes to the center of the mat right leg behind go ahead and push one inch forward tuck those toes closer and then just bring all that energy up into the body so you feel that right leg just super fiery and then you're going to take that fire and lift it off the floor good pull the abdominals in with that take the left arm off the floor pull the abdominals together and see if you can stretch long through heel and fingers can you soften that place at the back of the neck and then exhale release one more sitting on back wiggle those wrists roll them around we've got one more here we go tabletop right knee towards center left leg back hug around the bones push forward one inch draw that foot in one inch and just squeeze and hug bring muscle energy up through arms and legs keep that strength in that left leg lift it up off the floor extend your right arm forward bring in your abdominals together knit them together stretch out through heel and fingertips good and then come on back you're going to walk your knees back and you're going to inhale to cow tilt and exhale downward facing dog and go ahead and tread this one out take your time getting one side of the body to stretch and then the other and as you do this instead of just moving like oh, dee -dee -dee -dee, i'm just you know not paying attention slow it down and notice how your weight transfers to one leg and then to the other and you just go slowly through that weight transfer and so you start to feel how body parts adjust and shift and change and then inhale tippy toes exhale squat dog so you bend your knees stick your sitting bones up back and apart and then gently walk yourself forward take your time to the front of the mat and you've got blocks there so if you're tight today blocks are super handy and we never know from any day to day what we're going to feel in our bodies even if we're generally open in the hamstrings there are days when they're not as open big deep breath here can you melt i'm going to call that just for ease of of talking about it i'm going to call that lower neck so when i say soft and lower neck you'll know what i mean that space at the upper shoulder blades before c7 from here soften the knees imagine you're pushing the earth away as you inhale up Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Utkatasana. Bring the hands to the hips and imagine that you're sitting back. You're going to transfer your weight onto your left leg. Take your right leg back to a lunge. Take a breath there. And as you exhale, bend that front knee and step on forward back to Utkatasana. Transfer your weight onto your right leg sneak that left leg back to a lunge inhale deeply exhale bend deeply transfer the weight step it forward one more each side left the right leg goes back inhale exhale to step forward transfer the weight left leg steps back inhale exhale to bow and step forward beautiful from here just drive yourself up to standing exhale release your hands take a pause take a breath notice the action the awareness the sturdiness of the legs exhale completely and inhale fly exhale dive uttanasana inhale press yourself up halfway to ardha uttanasana exhale bend your knees take your right leg back to a bent knee lunge 
You're going to walk your left hand onto the inside. Remember, blocks are okay here if you need. You just take a moment. I like to swing a little bit left and right as if I'm just kind of warming up the circumference of that joint, getting a little release of synovial fluid, and then reframe your front foot, tuck those back toes under, rock it forward, stepping forward, Uttanasana. Push into earth for Ardha Uttanasana. Bend your knees, take your left leg back, bent knee lunge. Walk that right hand onto the inside. Take a moment just to swing a little bit, just to get some juice going into those hips. And then reframe your front foot. Step it on back as you press down through the floor. That leg sweeps back to downward facing dog. Bring your feet together. Inhale, step strongly through your left leg and release your right leg to the sky. And release that one down. So you're gonna, I want you to notice the, the word choice here. So you're gonna stand strongly on your right leg and release the left leg to the sky. Little different than lifting it maybe. And release it on down. Inhale to tippy toes. Exhale, squat dog, look forward. Just a little hop or a walk or a step all the way to the front of the mat. Exhale, Uttanasana. Find your blocks. Bring them up to the top level, or maybe it's a chair for you or a bolster. You're going to place the weight on your left hand and your left foot. You're going to reach for your right ankle and bring it up and across the other leg. So it looks like figure four. And you just breathe. And you can do just a little bit of a soft bend and stretch just to get a little bit of movement into that hip. One more breath. And then go ahead and grab that ankle and put it on down. Bow forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, press yourself halfway up, Arda. Exhale, weight goes on the right foot and the right hand, and you lift up that left ankle and place it over top of the left knee. And this nice little figure four hip stretch. And again, you can do a little bend and straighten just to really feel the movement, the stretch in the hip. And then you go ahead and release that ankle down to the floor and bow deeply down. Inhale, halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, bend the knees, Utkatasana. Press, even as you're sitting back onto that little teeny chair behind you, you press and lift the heart, and the abdominals lift up as you come up to standing. Exhale, release your hands. Inhale, fly. Exhale, dive forward. This time, you're going to walk your feet a little wider on the sticky mat and you can bend your knees a little bit here and reach the arms up behind you interlace fingers and let the arms drop forward now i want you to turn your attention to the lower neck there the place that we've been talking about and see if you can just soften it melt it forward Breathe. Notice what happens as you try to put your attention on this very different place that we can't really see, but we can feel into. One more breath. And then release your hands. Bring them to the floor. You're going to mash potato your feet a little closer. Press yourself up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, step back as you take your right leg back. Step into a lunge. Walk your hands onto your top knee and press down and forward like you're bracing. So you get that little abdominal retreat. And then put your attention to your shins and the action of the shins here is forward, believe it or not. So the top of the shin here, right underneath the knee, should move forward as the hips move back. And just breathe here. On the next inhale, you sweep your right arm up overhead and you bow it over to the left. 
and then you try to soften that place of the lower neck. You just see, what would that feel like if I could soften there? Beautiful, and then release that on down. We're gonna switch sides through Uttanasana, standing forward fold. So you rock it forward. You can take little steps if you need to, to bring that all the way forward into a forward fold. Inhale, halfway up, pressing strongly through earth. Exhale, bend the knees, take your left leg back to a bent knee lunge. Walk your hands onto that front knee. You push down and forward, a little traction here so that those abdominals engage. Remember, shins forward, thighs back. Because there's a tendency they like to kind of shove under and the tailbone shoves under. And it's not just, it's not very good for you. You want there to be amplification, for lack of a better word, in the booty. And then inhale, fly that left arm overhead and take it over to the right. And then put your attention into that lower neck space. And see if you can just soften it, melt it forward. Beautiful, from here, we're going to release our hands to the floor and step our right leg back to meet our left leg. The big toes are gonna come together, the knees are gonna wide apart and we're gonna take child's pose. Just bowing forward here. And again, take your attention to that upper or lower neck there and see if you can soften it forward. And as you do that, notice that you want the abdominals to stay engaged. And that's kind of a, a fun challenge. From here, we inhale with our abdominals, come on up to tabletop. We're gonna do twisted childs. So the right arm inhales out to the right and up towards the sky, but take a pause there. And this is a twist, just like we did earlier. As you twist here to the right, the left sitting bone should draw wide a little bit to open up that psoas. And then as you exhale, the hand comes back down and through the knee and the arm, all the way to Twisted Child's, all the way to the right shoulder. The left hand can kind of walk itself out overhead, or if you want a little bit more of a challenge, you stand, you, you bring your hands into prayer. So it's like you're standing on your right elbow here, and you just push. And you'll notice that kind of helps you bring a little more attention into the torso. And then at the very next breath, you soften that place of the lower neck. Like bring it, let it fall, move forward. Keep the abdominals engaged. And then gently release. And the reason I'm emphasizing that is because that I think might really help your neck and shoulders um, really feel a little bit softer. We carry so much unconscious tension there that I think that that might just help. And when you're doing other activities like painting or whatever you're doing, you might just tuck in there for a moment and go, how is that, that lower neck there? How am I holding it? Inhale, the left arm overhead. We're gonna pause here. Just so you notice your right sitting bone didn't wanna come with you. If it did, gently spin it wide. Beautiful. And then exhale, release all the way through the knee and the arm to your left shoulder and you can take your right arm and just stretch it straight overhead like downward facing dog or if you want a little more challenge you bend the left elbow you bring prayer hands together and you push and you get just a little bit more rotation in the shoulders upper back just keep that left sitting bone drawing a little bit more to the left Keep your abdominals engaged and breathe. Beautiful. From here, we'll just release out of that pose. Inhale to cow tilt. Exhale, downward facing dog. Beautiful, inhale, tippy toes. Exhale, bend your knees deeply, squat dog and then just walk your way to the front of the mat, Uttanasana. Bowing deeply, exhaling completely. Inhale, push the earth away, Ardha Uttanasana. 
Exhale, Utkatasana, hands on the hips. Press the heart forward first, even as you're sitting back. Pull the belly in and come up to standing. Exhale, release. We're just gonna take the hands out to the sides, inhaling. As we exhale, we're gonna bring the right arm over the left for a double wrap. Now it doesn't have to be a double wrap. It can be the back of the hands together where you press or you can just kind of grab your fingertips here and you're gonna lift your elbows slightly and bring your hands away from you. Inhale. As you exhale, can you bring your elbows into your upper ribs? Inhale, come back up. As you exhale, bend your knees. Can you bring your elbows into your belly button? Inhale, sweep your arms straight up into the sky and all the way around. Beautiful, and then just kind of shake them and roll them. Let's go second side. So inhale, arms out to the side. This time left elbow comes over right, either for a single or double wrap. Inhale, lift the elbows slightly, hands migrate away from you. On your next inhale, breathe in. As you exhale, try to touch your lower ribs with your elbows curling over, complete exhale. And then inhale, come up. We're gonna bend the knees and as you exhale, try to touch your belly button. And then inhale, sweep the arms around and all the way behind yourself. You're gonna interlace your fingers, goofy style. You're gonna walk your feet towards the edge of the mat. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, bend knees, bow forward, soften the place of the neck. Just imagine that the head can hang, but the neck, the lower neck there can soften forward. See if that just changes anything about the way you feel into the pose. Last breath. Exhale, release. Migrate those feet closer together. Hands can come to the floor or blocks. Inhale, halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, bend your knees. Take your left leg back to a straight leg lunge. And you're gonna anchor it so it's square to the back of the mat and walk your right hand onto the inside of the right leg and, and then place that elbow up on the knee. Inhale, press down into the floor as you open that left arm to the sky. Okay, we're gonna add a little variation. So keep that, but migrate that right elbow to the inner thigh, then bring your hands into prayer. And as you press elbow to thigh, look down, make sure the knee is tracking right over second and third toe. And then you just look forward, but you melt that space in the back of the neck and see it, if it helps you to look up. If you wanna sweep the arms for the last breath wide, you can. And then exhale, release. We're gonna come through center. So we're gonna turn that right foot in and come through center for Prasarita Padottanasana, inhaling halfway up, exhaling, bowing all the way through. Here's another favorite one for shoulders. You're gonna bend the left knee. You're gonna take the right, no, I'm sorry, the left hand and reach. I think I said that all wrong. I'm gonna start over. <laughs> Coming to center, bend the right knee. Take the left hand and reach to the outside of that right shin. I think I'm all screwed up. <laughs> You're reaching across the body anyways to that outer shin. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't even try to mirror you this time. But drive the elbow of that hand that's holding the shin, drive the elbow down and then see if you can pull isometrically, like you're trying to pull the shin in and then the shin resists and you'll get a nice little stretch in upper back. Okay, release that out, come back to center. Let's see if I can do this on the second side. Wish me well. So I'm gonna bend my left knee and I'm gonna take my right hand and reach it to that opposite shin. 
here I bend that right elbow so it's reaching for the floor and then I resist. So I pull the shin like I'm trying to pull it to the midline, but it pulls wide and I use my abdominals and feel that stretch in the upper back. Beautiful, one more breath. Hopefully we did that nicely together. Come on up and walk yourself all the way to the other side. So now my left foot is forward, my right leg is anchored, and you walk to the inside of that left foot. Step up on, elbow onto knee. Inhale, you press down with your legs as you open your right arm to the sky. Breathe deeply. Beautiful, now we migrate that left elbow to the inner left thigh and the hands come in prayer. Look on down at that left foot to make sure that left knee is tracking right over second and third toes. And then you get isometrically really clear, really powerful here. You'll feel a little bit of work maybe in the belly. And if you want, you can stay here and try to look up with that soft back of the neck or you can widen out like a big T. Just keep that lower neck softening forward. And just see if that changes the way your pose is. Exhale, bring it down. You're gonna migrate back to the middle for Prasarita Padatanasana. Lots of twists today. Take your right hand underneath your face on the floor. It can be on a block as well or fingertips. The left hand is gonna come onto your sacrum and I want you to just open the shoulder and stack it. But as you do, notice what's happening to your right inner hip or thigh and just drive that inner leg back and apart. Good, and if that feels good to you, draw in your abdominals and extend your top arm for a nice little twist. Can you melt that spot of the neck? and release bring it on down take a cleansing breath you can bow here and we'll try second side so we're bringing our left hand to the floor tippy fingers or a block and the right hand behind us and you're just going to drive down into the earth as you try to stack shoulder over shoulder and then just notice what happens to your inner left sits bone your inner left thigh. I want you to drive that over to the left. Bring in your abdominals and see if you can soften the back of the neck. If that all works for you, you can try stretching that back arm up overhead, making sure that you don't just shove into the back of the neck, but it melts forward. And release. Beautiful. Go ahead and step down onto your knees and just sit on back and take a cleansing breath. Wow, we're almost near the end. I don't believe it. Time goes so fast when you're having fun. Let's go ahead and scoot onto our backs with a block. I wanted to do one little back bend today, so we'll, I'll talk you through that. You're gonna take the block if you have it or something else underneath the hips. The elbows are gonna come into the sides. I call this robot arms. You're gonna soften the back of the neck forward, like just let it go. Because oftentimes we find there's a lot of unconscious holding there. And then you're gonna press down with your booty and your elbows and the back of your head and lift up into an arch. Don't let the chin pop up but see if you can put the work into the spine and let the booty be full and active there on the earth and breathe until you can bring that whole spine into the body in and forward, just like you've been working with the neck and you keep breathing here. We have muscles, we have ways of moving bones that we don't even know about in our pedestrian lives. And yoga wakes up these little spots of ours that have gone to sleep, taking a little break. Just say, wake up, wake up, and release that down. Take a cleansing breath. Let your feet walk out to the side. Let your knees drop in. And we're gonna do one more of those just to strengthen 
the lumbar curve and the whole arc of the spine. So walk your feet so they're right underneath your knees. Take your hands in robot. Push down with, with feet and booty until the spine begins to lift. You can readjust elbows and shoulders if you need to. You can melt that place of the back of the neck. You can in fact bring the whole spine in and forward. One more breath. I love it when I find one more spot in my back where I can engage where I wasn't before. Go ahead and take your legs up into the sky, one at a time. Legs up the wall pose without the wall. If you have a wall, here's a great pose for you to place your legs up a wall Arms can go out in T, and then just very gently look over to your right hand, letting the left shoulder drop, and then release that. Look over to the left hand, letting the right shoulder drop. A little neck stretch for you. Let's do one more each side, gently looking over to the side. As you look over to that right hand, let the left shoulder get heavier. And breathe into anything that's tight. And release that. Look over to the left. Let the right shoulder be heavy. Find that gentle stretch through the front of the neck or the side scalenes. I think this really gets the scalenes. One more breath. And gently release. Drop your feet down one at a time. Interlace your hands behind the back of your head. Thumbs on the occiput. Lift up slightly. Think more about length than about jamming the chin to the chest, and then start to uh, traction the neck as you place it back down. It almost might feel like your chin is tucking in a little bit more. And you can do that a couple times if you want, just so you get that back of the neck long, and then melt the place of the back of the neck. Like just notice if you're unconsciously holding it tight and pushing it towards the back. Take another breath there. If you'd like to take that block and place it underneath your feet, take your feet in prayer and take a few moments to do what I call golden retriever in the sun pose. You just let those inner hips widen. And here, if it were me, I would reach back again and find that back of the neck and lengthen the occiput and soften behind my neck, behind my upper shoulders. A few more breaths here. From here, we gently remove that block. You can gently push it off to the side. Take your legs down into Shavasana. Take a couple breaths to signal to your body that it's time to rest deeply. And this is where I say goodbye and namaste. Thank you for joining me. May your day be beautiful. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Thank you.